हेलो एवरी वन आई वेलकम यू ऑल इन दिस लेक्चर विच इज़ फिफ्टी फिफ्थ लेक्चर ऑफ द कोर्स प्रोसेस इक्विपमेंट डिज़ाइन एंड हीयर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस डिस्टिलेशन कॉलम प्रोसेस डिज़ाइन एंड इफ़ यू रिकॉल द लास्ट टू लेक्चर्स ऑफ दिस कोर्स देयर वी हैव डिस्कस डिज़ाइन ऑफ प्लेट एंड वी कॉल एट एंड वी कॉल इट एज प्लेट हाइड्रोलिक डिज़ाइन ओके सो इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल इलस्ट्रेट द डिज़ाइन ऑफ प्लेट विद द हेल्प ऑफ एग्जाम्पल सो लेट स्टार्ट दिस सो हियर आई एम हैविंग एग्जाम्पल टेन एक्चुअली दिस एग्जाम्पल नंबर इज एज पर द प्रॉब्लम वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इन डिस्टिलेशन कॉलम टॉपिक ओके सो इफ यू सी फ्रॉम द बिगिनिंग इन डिस्टिलेशन कॉलम दिस इज टेंथ एग्जाम्पल सो इन दिस एग्जाम्पल अ डिस्टिलेशन कॉलम is to be designed it means we have to design the plate to separate a mixture of acetone water feed contains 4% by weight of acetone and from this 95% by weight purity can be recovered in distillate that is the top product the bottom product is essentially the water and we can consider that acetone is not available in water which is the bottom product okay so the maximum feed rate here is 15000 kg per hour 75% is the turn down ratio so minimum flow rate should be 0.75 into 15000 of the feed okay using mccaffley method following information we can obtain like number of trays are 18 slope of bottom operating line is given as 4.5 and slope of top operating line is given as 0.6 right so as far as these slopes are concerned for top operating line it should be l by v and for bottom it should be l dash by v dash right so along with this we have some physical properties also such as base temperature and top plate temperatures are given for bottom plate and top plate properties are given okay so here you should keep in mind that surface tension is 16 to 10 power minus 3 and for top it is and at top temperature it is considered as 25 into 10 power minus 3 newton per meter okay other properties are given like this and uh, column specification that is tray spacing is mentioned as 600 mm and hole to active area is 8% or that is 0.08 okay so in this way you consider the complete problem for plate design and what we have to estimate let's see that first of all we have to calculate column diameter then decide liquid flow pattern and then decide the plate layout that is down cover area net area active area hole area wear length wear height hole diameter and number of holes after that weeping and entrainment conditions should be checked and maintained if this is not within the if these are not within the permissible range and next we have to find out perforated area then the pressure drop and then down comer liquid backup and then down comer liquid backup so you see all these parameters we have to calculate so these particular calculation should be carried out for bottom plate okay not the top plate so what change will occur when we consider bottom plate as well as top plate that we will discuss while solving this problem so let's start with column diameter calculation but before that we have to find out vapor liquid flow rate in top region as well as bottom region so let's see that now when we consider the distillate that is basically the top product in this we can make the balance like d into 0.95 that is 95% of sot that is 95% of acetone is recovered and in the feed 4% is available so that should be 0.04 into 15000 that is the total feed okay when you solve this you can find out total top product as 6 
as 631.579 kg per hour ok and uh, here we are given r by r plus 1 as 0 0.6 how we can consider this because top operating line slope top operating line slope is given to us that is l by v should be 0 0.6 right so here we can consider l by l plus d ok we can write v can be written like this so further if i consider l by d divide by l by d plus d by d we can we can simply show it as r by r plus 1 ok so that should be equal to 0 0.6 from this we can calculate the reflux ratio that is r and it should be 1.5 right and so we can calculate vapor flow rate in top section so that should be r plus 1 into d so value should come as 1578.9475 kg per hour now if you see total feed available to us is 15000 from which this much we can recover through distillate so this much we can obtain as bottom product ok so let us see so further we have to find out flow rates of liquid as well as vapor available at bottom section of the column so let us see how to find this we are given the slope of bottom operating line and that should be lm dash by vm dash and when we make the balance l dash should be equal to v dash plus b right so l dash we can consider over here v dash we have to find out and this bottom flow rate is already we have calculated ok so considering this you can find out v m dash as well as l m dash as these values ok now once i am having the flow rates of liquid and vapor at top of the column and bottom of the column i should start the calculation of column diameter so for that we should find out flv value and then we will further calculate other parameters so let us start the calculation as far as column diameter is concerned flv we should calculate at bottom as well as at top and the expression is given like this ok now if you see lw by vw at bottom as well as at top so these are nothing but the slope of operating line so that we can consider as 4.5 properties are given to you ok so you can calculate flv bottom 0 0.125 and top 0 0.0319 ok now once you have the flv value at top as well as at bottom we should further find out factor k1 ok and all these values will be required to find out flooding velocity ok so let us see how to see the value of k1 this is the graph from which we can find out k1 value and if you see as far as tray spacing is concerned it is given as 0 0.6 ok now if you see flv value at top of the column so that should be 0 0.03 right which we have just calculated so here we must have the 0 0.03 value and if we consider this we can find out k1 value corresponding to 0 0.6 spacing as this ok so value you can obtain as 0 0.12 at the top and similarly you can see the value of k1 at the bottom ok now once you have this now once you have this k value from the graph you can correct this why you have to correct because surface tension of the liquid is other than 0 0.02 ok and here we should also consider the correction factor for hole to active area ratio ok because it is given as 0 0.08 however for this graph 0 0.1 is considered ok so let us correct the k1 and k1 let us say the k1 value at top as well as at bottom so here I am having bottom k1 this is the value of given this is the value of k1 and here we have the correction factor for surface tension because 16 to transpire minus 3 is given and 
0.02 is the value for which that graph is obtained okay and further 0.9 because this is the whole to active area correction factor. So, corrected k1 we can obtain as 0.1065 for the base or the bottom and for the top we can find the k1 corrected as 0.1129 right and once I am having the k1 value we can obtain the flooding velocity at bottom as well as at top. So, this is basic equation for the flooding velocity at the bottom we can use corrected k1 and so the properties at the bottom and we can find and we can find flooding velocity at the bottom as 3.9425 and similarly I can find flooding velocity at the top which is coming as 2.1196 ok. So, these are basically the flooding velocity you have to fix the minimum vapor velocity and that should be 85 percent of flooding velocity because the recommended range is 80 to 85 percent. So, I am considering 85 percent. So, the vapor design velocity we can consider as 0 0.85 into the flooding velocity at bottom as well as at top right. So, design velocities are so design velocities are given as 3.3511 at bottom and 1.8016 at top. So, these are basically velocity of vapor ok and we consider this as a design velocity and now we will see the volumetric flow at top as well as at bottom. So, as far as volumetric flow of vapor is concerned we have to consider the flow we have to consider the mass flow rate which we can obtain by balancing which we have already done in previous slides. So, at the bottom mass flow rate of the vapor is obtained as 4105.263 it is divisible by it is divisible by density at the bottom and this is for conversion of hour to second right. So, we can obtain volumetric flow at the bottom as 16291 meter cube per second right. In the similar line at the top we can obtain volumetric flow as 0 0.204 meter cube per second ok. So, once I am having the volumetric flow rate of vapor as well as vapor velocity we can obtain the net area ok. So, let us see how the net area is coming into picture. For this let us focus on the cross sectional view of the column and net area is basically this area that is the whole area of the plate right. However, if we consider the holes these holes will be present in active area only. So, whatever vapor is coming from the bottom it will it will pass through these holes only right. So, if vapor is coming from the bottom it can be covered by this whole plate ok. There is no doubt that it will enter from these holes only, but it will spread throughout this plate and therefore, we should consider net area which is this area right. So, net area is basically volumetric flow divided by the velocity of vapor ok. So, division of this will give the net area and at the bottom net area can be obtained as 0 0.486 and at the top it is obtained as 0 0.1132 right. Now, once I am having the net area how should I obtain the column area? Column area can be obtained by considering down comer area. So, usually down comer area is considered as 12 percent ok and which is this fine. So, once I know this area net area and 12 percent down comer area if I divide net area by 0 0.88 I can calculate the column I can calculate the column area. So, at the bottom column area can be obtained as 0 0.5524 and at the top it can be obtained as 0 0.1286 and so simple calculation gives the column diameter at bottom as well as at top. However, if you focus on the distillation column or the absorption column 
diameter does not change along the height diameter should be same so what we have to do over here whatever diameter is larger in value that we should choose as the column diameter okay so in this case column diameter should be 0.8386 okay so what we have to consider over here that whatever will be the location of the plate either it is top or the bottom column diameter calculation should be carried out in both the section and we should choose the larger value among the two fine however from here onward whole calculations will depend on the location of the plate okay so from here onward all calculation will be carried out for bottom plate only so let's start that so next what we have to calculate we have to find out the liquid flow pattern and for that i should focus on this figure okay so if you see here i am having liquid flow rate that should be in meter cube per second and on x axis we have column diameter so as far as column diameter is concerned it is basically 0.83 so somewhere here it will fall okay and as far as that liquid flow rate we should consider this lm dash because now i'm because now i am focusing on the bottom plate so at the bottom liquid flow rate is given with this value okay and that should be converted into meter cube per second so the value should be 5.34 into 10 to minus 3 so if we consider that value will lie somewhere here okay so that value will lie somewhere here and bottom we can and from x axis we can and from x axis we can trace the column diameter so somewhere it will lie here so that will be basic so that is basically the cross flow single pass so that you can select as the flow pattern okay after that we will carry out the design of the plate or we can consider the layout of the plate as we can choose the down comer area and that should be 12% of column area okay so down comer area should be 0.66 meter square net area we have already calculated okay active area is basically column area minus twice of down comer area okay because that you can consider this is the this section only okay so in this way we can find active area as 0.4203 and 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 next we have to find out the wear length how i can find it i have been given 12% as down comer area okay and we can use this graph so corresponding to 12% down comer area if you see the lw by dc value it should come as 0.77 okay so from here you can find out the wear length which should come out as 0.64 which is also called as the cord length so now we have to decide the wear height hole diameter and plate thickness so let's see that as far as wear height is concerned the most recommended value is 50 mm and for hole diameter it is 5 mm and we can consider plate thickness as 5 mm so once i am having the whole diameter i can calculate cross sectional area i can calculate cross sectional area of one hole and we can find out number of holes considering whole area divided by area of one hole so this whole area value how i can obtain that this is 8% of active area if you recall the example so this value should be 0.0336 not this right so consider this value and you can find number of holes as 1712.79 as it cannot be in decimal so complete number should be 1712 because area is fixed so we have to round off the so we have to round off the number of holes okay so if you see the problem what we have to calculate first we have to check the entrainment as well as weeping condition so let's first check entrainment condition and for that and to find out the entrainment we should consider flv value 
which I have already calculated and the value of FLV available at bottom that I should consider because I am designing the bottom plate now, right. And uh, after that I should also consider percentage flooding, so that I have considered as 85 percent, okay. Now in some cases what we do like whatever column diameter we have calculated just we consider the standard diameter available in the market. Okay? So, if that you are considering in that case you have to recheck the value of flooding. Okay? So, that we are not considering over here. So, I have taken 85 percent as the percentage flooding. Okay? So, at the bottom FLV value is given as 0 0.1215 and we can use this graph. So, as FLV value is coming as 0 0.12, so that value you can obtain somewhere here and that should be corresponding to 85 percent flooding. So, that line will lie somewhere here, right. So, considering this we can find out the value and, and that value will come as 2.7 and that value is coming as 2.7 into 10 power minus 2 and it should be less than 0 0.1. So, here entrainment condition is satisfied. If it is not satisfied, you have to change the column diameter. Okay? So, for that purpose you can change down comer section because you cannot play with volumetric flow. Another thing which you can change is the flooding percentage. Right? So, next is we have to check the weeping condition and for weeping condition I have to calculate minimum liquid flow rate. Okay. So, if I consider the maximum liquid flow rate, so that value is available over here. Okay. This we can obtain by balancing the mass and uh, further we can obtain maximum liquid rate as 5.131 kg per second considering 75 percent turn round. Considering 75 percent turn down, you can find out minimum liquid rate as 3.848 kg per second. Okay? And after that, I have to calculate the design velocity at which weeping will occur, okay? minimum design velocity. So, let us see that and to calculate that velocity, I have to find out K2 factor. Okay? For that, I should use this graph where HWV can be obtained using this expression. Okay? So, let us obtain that. So, here I am having maximum HOW and minimum HOW. As I am focusing on weeping condition, I should consider minimum HOW. Right? So, 750 and here I am having the minimum liquid flow rate which we have seen in the last slide and this is basically the density and 0 0.64 is the chord length which we have already calculated previously. So, 25.49 mm HOW is there. So, at minimum rate HW and HOW can be obtained as 75.49 and for that value you can see the value of K2 like this. So, that K2 value you can obtain as 30.7. right? Now, once you have these values you can obtain minimum design velocity at which weeping will occur. So, its value should come out as 14.749 meter per second. And in this I have calculated 5 mm hole dia. Right? And uh, further we have to find out the actual vapor velocity. So, this is basically the volumetric flow of the vapor at bottom and this is the maximum value we consider the minimum value of that because weeping should be corresponding to minimum vapor velocity. Okay? So, for that I should consider minimum flow rate as well and that should be divisible by whole area. Okay? So, 36.3638 meter per second is the actual vapor velocity and that is the minimum vapor velocity and this is well above then this value. So, at present my condition is satisfied. However, if it is not satisfied, what you can change? You cannot change the actual minimum velocity of the vapor because that you can obtain based on the volumetric flow and that is basically based on the mass flow. right? So, that you cannot change. You can change the minimum design velocity and that, and that is given here 
so you can change different value of hole diameter and decrease this value right so in this way you should meet the weeping condition and next we have to find out the perforated area for perforated area we have to find out this theta c value and for that you can use this graph lw by dc you already know okay and corresponding to this you can find this and corresponding to this you can find the value of theta c which is coming as 102. which is coming as 102 degree this is not the celsius over here so that is 102 degree only and area and how i can find the perforated area by reducing the unperforated area which is available over here from the active area okay now why i am deducting this area because wherever I am having the calming zone and the support ring, you cannot make holes over there. Okay? So, we consider different perforated area in comparison to active area. Okay? So, this angle you have already seen as 102. So, this angle we can consider as 180 minus 102. So, that is 78. By simple geometry, you can find out this length as well as that can be multiplied by this thickness. So, you can find out area of this zone into 2 will give the area of this zone also. And similarly, this chord you can also find out considering this chord. Similarly, this periphery you can also find out considering pi d. Okay? So, that you can find out like this and uh, when we consider this, it should be multiplied by this uh, thickness and twice of that should be considered. So, considering all these we can find out considering all these we can find out unperforated edge strip as 0.053 this is nothing but the area of support ring and this is the area of calming zone addition of this should be deducted from active area to find out perforated area right. So, A h by A p you can calculate and it should come out as 0 0.1095 and so you can find out Lp by dh. Okay? So, that should be, so that is 2.8 and which is basically falling within the range that is 2.524. Okay? And next what we have to calculate is the pressure drop in the plate. So, let us see that. So, to find out pressure drop we have to consider the pressure drop on dry plate that is Hd. HO, HW plus HOW and HR that is the residual pressure drop. So, let us see how to calculate HD. If you consider, so this is the expression for HD where this UH is the maximum vapor velocity through hole and this C0 is the orifice coefficient. So, maximum vapor velocity we can obtain as a volumetric flow of vapor at bottom condition at maximum divided by the whole area. Okay? So, you can consider this value as 48.48 and next we have to find out orifice coefficient and that we can see from this graph like here A h by A p is given which we have already calculated. Plate thickness and hole diameter we consider as same. So, 1 will be there. So, if I consider this A h by A p it is coming near to 10 and so you and so you can obtain value of C0 which is coming as 0 0.85. Okay? If you tally it properly, it will coming out 0 0.85. Okay? So, considering this HD, I can obtain as 120.97 mm. Residual head we can calculate with the constant that is 12.5 mm and uh, its value is coming out as 13.02. right? So, total pressure drop in the plate is HT which is addition of all these and value we can obtain as 215 mm liquid. And finally, we have to find out the downcomer liquid backup and for that we should consider the pressure drop in downcomer section and for that HAP should be obtained. And to consider the maximum pressure drop this and to consider the maximum pressure drop this value should be minimized. So, 
we consider h w minus 10 because this value we can consider between 5 to 10 right. So, h a p we can obtain as 40 mm area under the apron is a a p and that should be l w into h a p and value we can obtain as 0 0.0256. We will compare this with the down comer area which is 0 0.066 which is 0 0.066 and uh, we consider the minimum area among these two right. So, we will choose this area. So, considering A m as this we can find out H d c and which is coming out as 7.2358 mm right. So, let us see the backup in the downcomer and that can be given by H b we will add all these values and find this H B value as 0.303 meter and that should be lesser than this ok. That is half of plate spacing plus wear height and that should be calculated as 0.6 and that should be calculated considering 0 6 because that is the plate spacing and we are height as 50 mm right. So, if you calculate this, this 0 0.303 will be lesser than half of this. So, we consider that tray spacing is acceptable. Otherwise, we need to change the tray spacing and then you have to start the calculation again from the column diameter because k 1 factor will be changed ok which we have considered in flooding velocity right. So, accordingly what changes will be there that you have to consider from the beginning ok. And next we have to find out the residence time in downcomer section and this is the expression for that considering values over here because all values you know you can find out residence time in downcomer section as 3.74 which is more than 3 second. So, here we consider that the design is satisfactory. So, here we consider that design of the plate is satisfactory ok and wherever the conditions are not met whatever changes you have to do that I have already explained ok. So, in this way you can design the plate for a distillation column and this plate is basically sieve plate which we have considered ok and here you can find some of the references to study about the plate design in detail and now we are summarizing the videos and this summary is the video which we have covered in this week ok. So, summary of all these videos is in these lectures methods to compute column as well as plate efficiencies are discussed, contact of vapor and liquid over the plate is discussed different types of plates used in distillation column are described with respective to its merits and demerits. After that liquid flow pattern, plate construction and downcomer are discussed and then we have described the operating ranges of different conditions and further plate design procedure is discussed with detailed explanation of each step and finally, we have designed the plate with the help of example ok. So, in this way you can complete the process design of the distillation column and here I am stopping this lecture. So, that is all for now. Thank you.